I'm in the store the other day and I heard this. <laughs> These two dudes like, man, you believe Rihanna pregnant by that broke ass ASAP Rocky? Like broke ass ASAP Rocky? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up. Yo, what up, y'all? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. We're back with more of the segments. That's right, more of the segments. Subscribe right now, man. About to have a good time with this one, man. We got, we still got the same segments that we get off my chest. We got remember the classics. We got random list. We got a comedian from a hot five comedy show, and we got much respect. So, yo, sit back, relax, subscribe, tell a friend, comment, share, all that. I'm about to go. Let's go. First segment. I'm in the store the other day and I heard this. <laughs> These two dudes like, man, you believe Rihanna pregnant by that broke ass ASAP Rocky? Like broke ass ASAP Rocky? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up. ASAP Rocky is a, is a rapper with some hits and he's worth $20 million. What you mean broke ass ASAP Rocky, okay? Damn, okay, broke ass. Ain't like she pregnant by some dude that cleaned up the spit at the Six Flags and shit. Ain't none of that. He just happened to be a millionaire, and his baby mama's a billionaire. We can learn something from this dude. Come on, man. ASAP, let's take it back. Let's take it back. How did it happen? You know what I'm saying? How did he do that? You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's try to learn from him. I read up on it. I looked up on it. I was like, okay, how did they, how did they meet? They said they met around 2012, and they had been friends. He definitely played the ultimate friend zone trick. <laughs> He's the best at the friend zone. He said he was friends with her since 2012, and for eight years, they just been friends. The pandemic happens, and all of a sudden, the friend zone was over. They hung out together, stayed in the house together, and Rihanna walking around naked all day in the pandemic. She, you ain't gonna try? I'll try. ASAP <laughs> was like, look, we don't know when this is over. We might as well smash. And that's what happened. That's what happened. I wasn't there, but I can tell by the way they look at each other. And then they went on for like a year, a whole year together, smashing, walking around, locked in the house. Why not? You know, how many times could you binge watch anything? You know what I'm saying? She walk around naked and playing each other's music. Y'all have sex and listen to each other's music, writing songs. That's that's friend right there. They were friends first, and now they smashing. That's all it was. And then all of a sudden, Rihanna got pregnant, and then everybody was happy for some reason. I ain't never seen nobody so happy, but nobody being Rihanna pregnant. I saw her stomach. She was walking into pictures of the, 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 uh, the, the trains in New York. It was so beautiful. They had the baby. People were happy. She got signed up to perform at the Super Bowl. Everybody was happy. Then you saw the performance, and you're like, hey, she pregnant. You're like, she pregnant again. How's she going to be pregnant by that broke-ass ASAP Rocky? Man, come on. These are grown-ass people. Why should we care if they have it? They take a care of it. Ain't like they ain't got no money. Either one, if she had to go to, go to him and he get child support, they everybody wins. The baby ain't going to be broke. That's it. But they're like, man, how's she going to be with him? And she make all the money. Ain't nothing wrong with it. They were friends first. They know each other. They grown-ass people. He a millionaire, she a billionaire. They can afford the babies. The people you should be complaining about who had kids are little teenage girls that get pregnant because their friend are pregnant and having babies with guys who can do 200 push-ups. That's all. That's his only qualification. He ain't got no job. Y'all doing this shit because he can do push-ups. This makes no damn sense. Be worried about them. Don't worry about no millionaire and a billionaire. They can take care of them. They can have a village of fucking kids. It don't matter. They can afford it. Shout out to them, man. Congratulations to Rihanna and ASAP Rocky. She was walking around naked in my house. I had kids with her, too. Next segment. All right, remember the classes. We going there. We going. We taking you back. June 28th, 1988, man. Don't Be Cruel is dropped, man. Don't Be Cruel comes out, and it changes the game. B. Brown is king. That was the day Bobby Brown dropped Don't Be Cruel, and that was the day Coming to America came out, which is crazy to me because that's one of my – I graduated from high school, from grade school that day. Incredible. The second album for my man Bobby Brown, produced by L.A. Babyface, Teddy Riley. He is king right there. The Don't Be Cruel video, come on. Do, 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 do. He dancing like, who is this guy? Oh, that's the dude from New Edition who had that album that was out and did. He come out. He coming back with another one. He trying it again. King of Stage kind of win. You know what I'm saying? He had some tracks on there. He had girlfriend and he had girl next door. He got away from the bubble gun. He was like, man, give me some adult music. And he had the tracks, man. He got all day, all night. He got to take it slow. Man, B. Brown was doing it. But those are the, those throwaway songs and they were cuts. But man, the ones he dropped, he had six hits. <laughs> six hits? Don't be cruel. My prerogative. Roni, I want to rock with you. Every little step, I'll be good to you. Who can say they got six hits? He dropped the remix album that went platinum. 
He was on top of the world. And I think the video thing helped. He crossed over. He sold 12 million copies of this album, man. 12 million. After going probably like gold, which is 500,000 with the last album, he drops this and he's killing it. He's killing it. He's the guy to be back then. I don't think dude was probably 20 years old and he was the man. I was rooting for dude when he left New Edition. I'm like, yo, this is my guy. I'm going to follow Cat. That album went on for like about damn near two summers. Then he dropped the Ghostbusters song that wasn't on there. And this dude killing it. He was everywhere. He was on Arsenio damn near every week. <laughs> he was dancing on Arsenio. You saw what good a performer he was. He was the alternative to Michael Jackson at the time. It was like, yo, okay, Mike is like 30. So like, he, oh, we another young guy who does this. And he comes out and he's a little rougher than Mike. But he had the hits. He had the performance gene. This album came along at the right time. Michael Jackson is the greatest ever, but Bobby deserves some of that credit for influencing guys like Usher, Chris Brown, Neo, Trey Songz, and even R. Kelly. That's right, I said R. Kelly. Don't Be Cruel is one of the greatest. They probably the greatest R&B album. It's one of the greatest albums ever. He still ride on that album too. That's it's 30 years, I'll be 30 years in June for this album and he still gets money from this one album like the bobby the, the follow-up to that was cool but it wasn't this so thank you for this bob shout out to b brown man i'm a big fan bro next second okay random list we going we going back to the nba people going back to the nba the best big threes i've ever seen you know what i'm saying like i can't go with um chamberlain and baylor and west back in the 70s i don't know that i don't and um Bill Russell with Kuzi and them. I don't know that. I got to go from what I've seen. But I'm 48 years old, so I've seen a lot. Now, y'all about to be mad because I know y'all always get mad. Number eight, I'm going uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love. I think that was from 2014 and 2017. They played together, and they got to the championship. Numerous times, even when Kyrie left, they still win, but they lost. So it don't matter. <laughs> you a LeBron hater. No, I'm not. I love LeBron. But, hey, they number eight on this list. Number seven, the big three, the guys that kind of like Made you look at it, the stars that wind up going together. They started this. The Boston Celtics, 07 and 2012. Ray Allen, KG, and uh, Paul Pierce, man. They had me scared. I'm like, they're about to beat the Bulls record. They're about to beat the Bulls record. And they didn't, but they beat the crap out of the Lakers in the finals. Yeah, all right, my man KG got one and my man Ray got one. I was happy. I'm not a big Paul Pierce fan, but those two got one, so I was happy. So, yo, number six. Y'all be like, ah, you an idiot. I'm going... Go to State Warriors 2017-2019 uh, with Steph, KD, and um, Thompson. Y'all yeah, be like, well, Draymond, Draymond. I don't count Draymond. I, I, I don't like. I don't care for triple singles. I'm talking about real basketball guys who commit. I understand it's defense and emotion in the locker room and punches his teammates. If they, that works, but I need some stats. Not a big fan. They got two championships out the deal. It worked out. So, yo. Number five, San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio Spurs with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Ginobili, man. I think they got, what, four together? And then they went over to the next decade and got one? Yo, I ain't mad at them. i say this, though. I wasn't a big fan of the team because they, you know, they, 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 you know, they're kind of boring. I'm not going to front. They were boring, but they delivered. I'm not mad at them. They had Kyle uh, Kawhi Leonard, but he came through the, um, in the next decade. But those three together got those championships. So, yo, number four, I'm going to Heatles. LeBron again pops up on the list. The Heatles. Miami Heat. 2011, 2014, they, they, they was a problem. They was a problem, but, but you know, they probably be higher if LeBron didn't give that promise to the world that like they gonna win seven. I'm still mad at that. Not one, not two, not three, not four. Hey, Dwayne Wade should have kicked him in his shin. Like, shut your ass up. It's hard to get one of these damn things. You ain't got one yet. Number three, I'm going with what they consider probably they call them the greatest team ever at the time, or something like that. These guys, um, I'm going Boston Celtics. I'm going Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and um. Kevin McHale. That was the original big three. 67 wins one year. I think they had lost one game at home. I always made the all-star team every year. They were right there every damn year, and they were a problem. The, the average size was like 6'10 between all three of them. Number two, I'm going Showtime Lakers. Showtime Lakers. Magic Johnson them. Magic Johnson them. They got four rings out the deal because, you know, because James Worthy came in. James Worthy is the third. But um, Kareem and Magic was there. They got one together. So, yo, he brought James Worthy in. Boom. They were running. It was showtime, baby. NBA changed forever. Them in Boston changed the NBA forever, man. So, number one. 
Number one, man. Chicago Bulls. What do you think I'm going to say? I'm from Chicago. What do you think I'm going to say, man? I would go Horace Grant and, and Jordan Pippen and Horace. Well, Horace was like, yeah, he was good. You know what I'm saying? But when Dennis came, when Dennis came, we traded Dennis. People were like, man, y'all had the best team ever. Dude, they gave, <laughs> they gave us Dennis from Will Purdue. Really? That's a steal. Yeah, you better take advantage of the thievery. Man, look, that team, I don't – I don't know how many games. How many games did they lose? They lost like 40 games in three years, and they won the rest. So that's 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 crazy. That's the greatest team ever to me. And then people are like, no, no, no. The Warriors. The Warriors are. No, man. They lost 73 wins and nine losses, and they lost in the finals. We can't get I can't give you that. Best big three to me is Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Plain and simple. They knew they rolled. Mike was the scorer, defensive guy. Scotty was the all-around guy. He was the point forward, defensive guy. Dennis Rodman was the rebounder, defensive guy. What? What? How do you develop offense, people? Through defense. All three of them guys on the first team, all defensive team. That for like three years, during those three years, nobody in that list can say that. So I don't want to hear nothing. That's what it is. Number one, Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. That's the list. What do you think, people, huh? Who do you think should be on here? Oh, no, Patrick Ewing, Anthony Mason, and Mark Jackson? No, they ain't winning nothing. <laughs> the Bulls number one, man. Next thing. Because, like, guys' night out is the most unplanned thing in history, you know? And the way, the way guys hang out with each other is that we don't even tell them the event. We just tell them how many other guys are there. It makes no sense. Like, you'll just get a random call at 2.30 in the afternoon, like, hey, man, come to the bar. Craig's here, Kevin's here, Tyler's here, and you get your shoes and you fucking go, you know? And the thing is, like, you do shit that's just unplanned. Like, you know, like, one of my homies called me up one day. He was like, yo, Jarrell, we going to a strip club, dog." I'm like, ooh, which one? A strip club. That's what we was thinking, right? <laughs> And we go to the strip club, it is the dirtiest strip club I've ever seen in my life. We didn't do any Yelp reviews. Like, it was so dirty, the strippers was wearing Crocs. That's how you know. <laughs> you ever seen a butt naked stripper with just Crocs on? <laughs> <laughs> strippers should retire by now. Her name used to be Candy, now it's Peppermint. What the fuck happened to the place? <laughs> and the thing is, like, I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time, I said, and she went out with her friends, changed my whole fucking perception of shit, you know? Because when girls go out, like, it's a system. And that system is better than our own government, okay? <laughs> like, when girls go out, they make a group chat. The group chat say Becky's B-Day. And if Becky's B-Day ain't nothing but good suggestions and positive affirmations, <laughs> just slay today, queen. Just slay. slay. <laughs> and when a girl drop out, they replace that girl that dropped out. It is a system. <laughs> they will make a whole other group chat just to yeah. talk shit about one person. <laughs> <laughs> So do we hate Carol? We all hate Carol, okay. Dudes, we don't do that shit, man. No. We just dumb people, man, we dumb people. You know, especially like, cause I'm single now. I don't know any single people here. Make some noise if you're single. Woo! Single people, look at us lying to ourselves. There we go. <laughs> We're happy. No, this thing, cause like, single people, we like, there's a fucked up thing about it is that when you're in a relationship, everybody has an opinion to help you out. Everybody has sayings and stuff, you know what I mean? Happy, you know, happy wife, happy life, like all those type of things to get you going. But when you're single, nobody has no advice for you whatsoever. <laughs> they just say how they feel about you. That is it. <laughs> like you're going like, I'm so tired of being single. Stop being a bitch, dude. I'm like, that doesn't help. <laughs> Don't help, you know? Cause the thing is like, when you get single for too long, what happens is they put religion on you. You know what I mean? They put religion. Like, it, it just, you, you, get, it's, you don't get adopted to it. It's just in your life, and you don't know. You just have to accept it. And it's called astrology. I don't know how many people. <laughs> that is religion for single people. You know? And some people, won't, like, some people won't mess with you depending on which sign you are and shit. You know, like, you be like, I'm a tourist. No, fuck that. I can't fuck with a tourist again. <laughs> and everybody goes back and forth with it. And the thing is, I always hide my, my horoscope. I hide it. I don't try to show anybody my, my horoscope if I can help it. You know? And people get mad at me sometimes. Like somebody came up to me and was like, Jarrell, why the fuck don't you believe in astrology? And I had to tell him, I was just like, I just feel like astrology is just racism for birthdays, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like just because I was born in July, I'm an asshole? Like give me a chance. Like is that why Martin Luther King had it so bad? He was like, I have a dream. I was like, that sounds like a Leo. That sounds, 
You know, and he tried to go back and forth. He tried to go on like dates and stuff like that, right? And I had a date with this one girl that I really liked. It was fucking phenomenal, man, right? So, like, the thing is, this is what, you know, when you like somebody, you try to take them out, give them the best thing. But what happened that day is that my account got hacked. And it was a Friday. So, you know, if your account got hacked on, your, on a Friday, your bank is like, we'll see you Monday, nigga. <laughs> So, like, I was, like, depressed. The thing is, you get depressed on social media, man. You get depressed, very, especially financially, because you, you go on Instagram, you see everybody's accomplishments and shit, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like a fucking slingshot of just, like, hey, I'm in Dubai, hey, I'm on a yacht, hey, I'm in Wrigleyville wearing khaki shorts. Like, it's a lot of shit <laughs> that you have. Like, I do weird shit, like, when I get depressed. Like, I go on Venmo and like other people's transactions. <laughs> 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 Like, people come up to me and be like, why you keep liking my shit, bro? I'm like, I just think it's nice you had pizza. I think it's nice. You can split that with your cousin. <laughs> and no, and that night I had that date, man. And I had, like, played it up to guys. You know what the fuck we do when we want to take somebody out. We, like, we try to hype it up, do shit that you ain't never seen before. It's like, oh, we're going to go ice skating. They're going to listen to Maxwell the whole way there. And then we're going to listen to jazz in the park. Just all the shit, right? And the thing is that, like, at the time I knew my bank account was stolen, I had to do what every man would do. Lie like a motherfucker. That is what I had to do, right? And the thing is, I tried to text out, just like, yeah, you know, my car burnt down. My car was fine. And I was like, my car burnt down. And she said, you know what, Drell? I didn't come just so we could do all this stuff. I came to see you. And that was beautiful, right? That was amazing. Somebody just wanted to see me, right? She was like, can I just come over to your house? I said, of course, right? And that was beautiful until she put a rule in it, right? She was just like, yeah, we can Netflix and chill. And I was like, fuck. I didn't pay my Netflix bill. <laughs> So I had to YouTube and chill. Anybody ever had? I ain't talking about YouTube TV. I'm talking about the free version <laughs> of YouTube. Do you know how dangerous it is to watch your YouTube algorithm with somebody? You just be like, that's not me. That's not me. I don't listen to Joe Rogan. It's suggested. <laughs> That's why they make Netflix and chill, because they, they, they give you things that you can watch that's nice. You can watch Bridgerton. You can watch Orange is the New Black. Like, you go on YouTube, they be like, did Abraham Lincoln eat ass? You be like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 and it's not like you can't not click on the video, because it be in your head all day. <laughs> all right, much respect, dude segment. We going there. We going to my man from the shy. Born February 6th, 1957. That's right, actor, director, writer, comedian. He's one of the main reasons I'm in show business right now, man. Born in Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Robert Townsend. Robert Townsend? Robert Townsend? Come on, man. Come on. I damn near follow this guy, man. I'm all, I'm trying to marry his career. You know what I'm saying? He started off in the theater. I started off in the theater. He started doing extra work. I did extra work. He was an extra, he did, but he was in like classes like Mahogany, Cooley High. They say he was in the water, Warriors on IMDb, say he was a, one of the baseball fears, but you can't tell, they got on makeup, so you don't know. This dude, man, he started doing movies, he was Monkey Hustle, he was in uh, Streets of Fire, he was in one of my favorite movies of all time, Soldier Story, and he was like, man, you know, I'm fed up with this, man, I gotta, I gotta get mine. I got Keenan, Keenan, Keenan Ivy Wayne's, bring your ass, let's write this movie, man, I'm tired of this. I got credit cards to pay for this, all right, let's go. They wrote some, one of the classic, one of my favorite movies of all time, Hollywood Shuffle. He wrote and directed this joint, man. This movie is very underrated to me. I think I think it needs a little bit more love from the folks. Box office on there wasn't that hot, but it's a class you can watch it anytime. And I learned a big lesson from it. I remember going to see it, and I thought it was one of the greatest moments in my life. But it did benefit him, cause after that, Eddie Murphy grabbed him like, "Yo, come direct Raw." He direct Raw. Right after that, he does what did he do after that. He did Partners in Crime, which is which which I love. I loved all what four or five parts he did on that joint. Dad was on HBO. He had a deal with them. Keenan broke off, and he still was working. They wrote Five Heartbeats together, which is one of my favorite movies. Five Heartbeats, man. Come on. Then he goes back to Fox. He's like, Keenan can do a sketch show. I'm going to do one, too. I'm going to do Townsend Television. He does that. It didn't last long, but I thought it was great. I wish he would have stayed on. He leaves that. He goes to Parenthood. Parenthood for five seasons, 90 episodes. He does that. He continues to direct. <laughs> he did Baps with Holly Berry. He directed Little Rich with Leon. Carmen, hip hop up with Beyonce. Come on, man. And his daughter does comedy. Scott, Scott, Scott Townsend. This dude, man, give Robert his respect, man. Hey, I love that cat, man. He, he's one of the reasons why I do it. I love the work we'll do. Robert Townsend, man. Chicago's own. West, he's a West Side cat. So, yo, I'm a big fan, man. Happy belated birthday, too. It just passed, man. So, yo, you watching it, man? 
Love your stuff, man. Much respect. We out. That's the show. We're done. We out of here, man. Subscribe, comment, do something. You know what I'm saying? We need the love over here, man. And like I got to say all the time, do it and it's done. And we just did it and it's done. Shout out to Lawnmower. We out of here. See you next time.